you went for the eight point win. I did, yeah. They just about beat it. Yeah. Uh, sloppy game, lucky decisions for Ireland. No way we win a Six Nations playing this junk, says Hugh and Cork. Connor Murray's becoming infuriating to watch. His form hasn't been the same since he came back from injury, becoming so predictable, says Mike and Kerry. The Irish fans watching not overly enamoured with the performance today. No, but look, it's uh, results based, professional sport is results based, and you know they won, so that's it. They're going to have to try and figure out. Obviously, there is a, a dip in form, um, I think, last week and this week um, for the Irish halfbacks. You know, Joey Carby had, had one moment of brilliance that probably decided the game. Outside of that, you know, there was probably a bit of a struggle there. So I'd say, um, look, just have to try and take what we can really now at this point. Yeah, and it was a performance again, I guess, with an underperforming Conor Murray, but also with Johnny Sexton off the pitch for the vast majority of the game. It was the two out halves, though, that were actually crucial for Ireland that produced the two moments of magic. Sexton, when he was there, to set up the try for Stockdale, and then Joey Carberry in the second half with that burst through the middle to set up Keith Earls. I say, a win is a win, mm. but. Do we ex are we expecting too much that we should expect a better class of performance? Um, no, not really. I, I think <laughs> just and I said it last week as well. Just they're inaccurate at vital points. Like in the first half, in the second half, they had an opportunity. They held the ball for nearly two, three minutes, and then there's a communication error and. Uh, Murray passes the ball behind a pot of forwards and it goes on the deck. There's obviously a miscommunication. He's not throwing the ball to, to. Um, to the deck, someone's not supposed to be, or a missed call has gone in, and 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 they're the things that are really costing Ireland. Um, and against a team like Scotland, you know they can capitalise on those mistakes because they like that unstructured play. So, yeah, look, it's not a not a good performance, but it's a win. So they have to, and, and the lads are kind of. They don't look like they're after winning an away match in Murrayfield um, uh, there, so they know that they're not performing. But you know, you have to. A sign of a good side is is winning when you don't play well. Let's go to Murrayfield. Andy Dunn has been watching. So Ireland win twenty two thirteen. What are your initial thoughts? Uh, I'm I'm glad it's over. <laughs> it was uh, forty minutes. That second half's forty minutes of my life. I'll never get back. It was it was pretty poor from both sides. Um, but uh, I would agree. The players have there's very, very blank-looking expressions coming off the field. I don't think they'll derive any great satisfaction or joy from the performance. Uh, I think the result is good to get back on track, and, and we'll probably have to leave it at that. In terms of constructive playing that second half, uh, we tried. We were brave. We didn't get a, we, you know we didn't get much cohesion in our game, and I think similarly. Um, Although to a greater degree, Scotland's ineptitude actually broke up the game so much that it, it, the whole thing kind of happened between both sides 10 metre lines, and it was a lot of uh, had of a lot of huffing and puffing, but very little end result from either sides. So, what do you yeah. mean by their ineptitude? Well, Scotland were uh, Scotland couldn't hold on to the ball for more than two phases without making a, making a clear mistake. But it was a forward pass and knock on. And they threw it directly into touch with three minutes to go with um, a, you know, a pass that bounced and went forward. There was the type of play you just don't expect to see at international level. It was inept. So um, I, I'd say Scotland, to me, I was quite surprised. I, I actually thought Scotland were kind of far better than they've uh, displayed today. I, I, I think they're going to be pretty despondent with that effort. Um, in terms of their execution, um, more so than their actual plan. I don't think we can't really derive any any evidence from whether their planning or strategy was wrong because their their execution was so poor that we couldn't see any any uh, discernible plan to their play because they they would they would lose possession in yeah. two to three phases. So and do you put that down to Irish pressure? Uh, no, more often than not, they were unforced. I mean, there was there was a huge amount of unforced errors. Um, I think Scotland looked dangerous at times in the first half. But in the second half, they completely flattered to deceive, and uh, you know we we weren't we weren't excellent, we weren't overly poor. We just seemed to ride out Scotland's mistakes, make sure when we had possession, we held on to it for longer periods. But as I said, it's it's probably I'm glad it's over. It's 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 one of the worst Six Nations game I've seen in living <laughs> memory. Uh, certainly, that second half is one of the worst Six Nations halves I've seen in in memory. Yeah.
They had a couple of opportunities, Ireland, where you felt they might have kicked on. Uh, Rob Kearney had an offload on the inside yeah. uh, that didn't stick. They they seem to be having creating those opportunities, but just not. They just don't seem to be fully firing for for whatever reason at the moment. Is it, maybe I don't know. Did did it seem like they kind of lacked a bit of confidence, kind of when it, you were watching it live, or did they have? You know, was there a good atmosphere? You know, when you look at teams and you see them, there, you know, there's a real positive vibe, a good communication. They seem to be lacking yeah. that. No, I, I, I would agree. I think, you know, when you're when you're at a game, you get the advantage of of seeing what's going on off camera as such. Um, the body language was like it certainly wasn't negative. It just looked very tense, and I yeah. think they just absolutely wanted to grind out the results, particularly on the back of last week. Um, now we haven't lost Sexton after 25 minutes mm. having uh, very little fluency to the game it was one to just dig your heels in and grind out a result because you know it could have slipped away from us so there's a, there's a lot to be admired in that in the group just showing that tenacity um, and when everyone questions our, our capacity and our, our um, I suppose our overall uh, standards after last the England game. It's just important to get back on the horse as we did today. But it was for, it was a forgettable spectacle in terms of a, you know a sporting spectacle. When Conor Murray was strolling off with three or four minutes to go to be well, replaced, he was he was, but, he was limping. He wasn't strolling, so that's well, uh, limping off then. And, and maybe that answers maybe that yeah. answers my question. I was going yeah. to say he was shaking his head. I was wondering was that a disappointment of having to come off or maybe disappointment in his performance because when we're talking about Ireland being inaccurate at vital points it seems a lot of that still seems to rest on his shoulders yeah well I think there's an overemphasis uh, on on the box kick I think that's been going for a while and I I think it's possibly affecting his overall game because there's um, there's a huge responsibility on his shoulders to, to nail those box kicks high long get the kick chase up a hugely difficult skill um, and then you've got teams who are now targeting him at every single breakdown to dive low, to dive at his feet, to dive at his planted foot that's not kicking the ball. So he's got a lot of pressure on his shoulders and uh, he looks like he's carrying it, to be honest. He looks, he looks, he's not, he, he, the one thing I always thought about Murray when he's at his best is he looks completely un, he looks carefree. Mm. He, do, he, he doesn't play with a furrowed brow. He doesn't look like he's breaking sweat. And, and there's a lot of effortlessness to Murray when he's at his at his peak. He he looks like he's carrying a millstone around his neck at the moment. Whether he's he doesn't feel fully physically fresh, or whether the responsibility that's put on him for for the exits out of our own territory is weighing heavily on him because it, <clears throat> they're not working. They're they're not really gaining us momentum in our game. And I I think he's just very very could have straight at figure co- coming off the field. I I hope. The uh, the limp was just you know a little bit of soreness that he can walk off because it would be disappointing if he's picked up anything serious. And um, you, you you know sometimes foot injuries players are able to walk with them, but then you find yeah. out afterwards it's a bit more serious. So I'm hopeful that's not the case, obviously. And then Johnny Johnny only had the that 25 26 minutes, and we we wait to hear uh, the updates on on his situation. So yeah, it's. Um, I guess the one positive on the injury front is that if Italy next in two weeks' time, then there's exactly. another fortnight's break yeah, before the yeah. game against France. So essentially they have a month yeah, to get so themselves right. And, and a month as well to try and build a bit of, bit of momentum, yes, go to yeah. Italy, try and get the bonus point win, try and get a little bit of confidence. Because it, it, did that look to you to be a team that was a little bit shook by what happened last week? The Irish side, yeah. The Irish side. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean... I, as I said, that, that body language that you mm. can see when you're at the game, it wasn't kind of bubbly stuff. It wasn't overly communicative. It was just, uh, let's dig our heels in and get this across the line. It looked very much like we... we now, we weren't, we weren't put to the pin of our collar by Scotland. We didn't have to hang in there. We were in the lead and we were guarding that lead. But they didn't... It certainly didn't look... It looked a million miles away from, from our, our best... Um, and when the, the you know the level of performance, we're not going to play like we did against the All Blacks every week, or w- when we played against England, winning the Grand Slam last mm. year. But we were we were miles away from that. And that happens in sport, and we you know teams go through periods of form uh, for multiple reasons, and very can be very very layered at times. But nonetheless, with with a few key players injured. Um, a few new guys again getting a run probably the longest I think Carberry's had in a Six Nations game good positives in that too so so it's not uh, 
hopefully I don't sound negative. I'm just, I'm, you know, the, the well, performance well, wasn't fantastic, but we've got to win. I don't know if you can see what's written in front of me because it's a, a text in from Martin who's watching on Periscope this afternoon. I think it's a little too negative for Mandy. I think Carberry looks sharp with ball in hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm turning into an old grump. I'm, I'm, nearly, <laughs> I'm nearly 40 now, so I'm going to get really grumpy. Uh, no, I, I think uh, Carberry, you'd probably say, what, you know, par for sure, you know, gave one away with the intercept, but then created one and mm. uh, also created two or three uh, breaks for Kearney out wide from right to left. So mm. Kearney going up that left-hand side, and he did it by... I suppose something similar to what, what Russell does. He's taking it, taking it to the line. He's a threat himself. The, the defence has to narrow on him and then, and then throwing out a nice, uh, fast, wide ball to Kearney and creating a yard either side of the defender for Kearney to run through. And Kearney took it well. And actually, Kearney looked quite sharp when he was put through those two times. He also created something from nothing for that try for Earls. He, he ran directly uh, through to the Scottish forwards uh, it looked like he was going to get crumpled mm. but he had the strength and the leg drive to burst through that he had the presence of mind to to uh, draw the full back and then a lovely loop pass from left to right into the corner so um, I, I'm sure hopeful I don't sound too negative but uh, it was it was a nice piece to play yeah yeah as you say it was more dull than anything else yeah they, yeah. I, I guess one of the positives as well is, is how Ireland defended and with the exception yes, yeah. of Carberry's error like yeah. they didn't really put a foot wrong, it seemed defensively, and and we said at half time that five minute spell before the break might turn out to be crucial. Yeah, it feels like post game it turned out to be very vital into how the game went because yeah. Scotland didn't come back with any uh, same sort of energy in the second half that they had in those closing probably fifteen minutes of the first. Yeah, you're dead right. I I think that was the key point of the match. We 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 showed like we said we showed courage. But we, sh we show great discipline and belief in our own defensive system. It's very, very easy on your own line to, you know, you stick or twist. You run out and shoot and try and hit the guy and you leave a space either side of you. And sometimes a smart attacking bit of play, a bit of footwork or an offload can expose that. But everybody did the same thing and did it well. So great, great discipline to do it. Then you've got the courage and the physicality to make sure those hits are not soak-ups. And if you soak up a hit on your line, it's going to be a try. So they were quite, um, I suppose, winning those collisions and driving the, Scot the Scotsman back. Um, and it did look, um, Scotland had a spring in their step. They didn't quite get over the line. It looked like they were the guys who were really energised going into the second half. Mm. And perhaps the fact they didn't get that score at that point... Uh, you know, body language again is a funny thing. It looked like they'd have pep in their step, but they came out and they were awful in the second half. So mm -hmm. perhaps we just nullified them with that defensive effort, just enough to kind of uh, dampen their enthusiasm. Yeah, I think I think that probably was the win in the game, but I, I don't think we you should underestimate kind of the mental effect that last Saturday's performance and the result would have had on confidence and yeah. you know sometimes as you say you said already Donner, just to just to get get that win under your belt you can then relax and say okay well we're all right let's let's move forward we get as you say Nathan get that bonus point yeah. over in Italy and try and drive forward then for the last two last two games but you know I, I think Joe Smith will probably you know and he'll review it and he'll be quite critical I'm sure behind closed doors of certain individuals performance and uh, and team and accuracies at time but you know he'll be saying in there okay guys we've got a couple of weeks off job done and, yeah. uh, and let's build now you know you'd imagine yeah. he's going to make plenty of changes for that game against Italy so then when we're heading towards France and listen who knows how people's bodies are by then but in terms of the selection dilemmas ahead of today and, and how players played Rob Carney, was it a what sort of performance was it considering how he was last time out when we saw him against Scarlet in the Pro 14? Uh, overall, pretty good performance I think from Rob. He was given um, he was given the ball in space in that second half from Carberry, and he and he actually looked quite explosive at times, mm -hmm. um, which was refreshing. Um, his positional play is outstanding as always. He. Uh, he didn't get up in the air as easily as he'd like to, but that was more down to the, the Scottish kicking. Ali Price and Laidlaw put in some excellent box kicks. Ironically, when, when Murray's box kicking standards have, have slightly dropped, uh, both Price and Laidlaw put up some high balls that uh, Scottish um, Scottish back three, uh, Longhorn and Maitland were able to get up and win ahead of Kearney. Um, but overall, I think Kearney had a, would be quite happy and probably one of the most... Uh, 
contented Irish guys coming off the field today and I would have thought Schmidt would be quite contented with his efforts as well. Peter O'Mahony ended up getting the man of the match. Uh, other players who might have stood out? Uh, probably O'Mahony Oma- and, and Kearney. Um, there were, there were so Coyne came on and carried very effectively yes. in, the, in, the, in the second half, especially in those... Uh, spells where they had the ball for a long period of time so yeah. um, I think he was impressive off the bench Yeah, I think they were very I wouldn't go, I wouldn't be critical and say guys had poor games, it was, it was hard for guys to have a good game because the, the match itself became so disjointed with yeah. bre- the play breaking down so regularly uh, particularly uh, you know the Scottish team bre- the, weren't, weren't holding on to possession then we would kick it away and so there's a lot of guys I, I would imagine seem to Probably feel like, they, as, as Johnny said, they didn't look like they've beaten Scotland away coming off the field. It wasn't a game that will live long in their own memories, but they've got the win and that's all they needed to do. Yeah, I get the sense you just want to go home, Andy. I wouldn't mind going for a pint, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't believe I've had to talk for 20 minutes about this. <laughs> yeah, Liverpool are winning 3 0. You know? So you're in a good mood, anyways. Yeah, that's well, the Ireland win, Liverpool win, I'm happy. Dubs, <laughs> if the Dubs beat Kerry tonight, oh. then I'm, oh, geez, I'm really happy then. <laughs> uh, anything else you want to you wanna mention before we let you go? I, I would love to see us take some pressure off Conor Murray, asking him to box kick non stop. I would love to see us pass to our 10 in, in our own territory and our 10 to kick it punt 60 70 meter spiral or end over end trust our line and and give the opposition the ball 60 meters down the field and trust our defense which is a huge strength of our game i cannot fathom why we just relentlessly keep putting in these half hour kicks that go 10 meters up into the air whether we concede possession or we compete for it Everyone knows we're going to do it now. Most teams are catching it and just having possession 10 metres down the field. And it looks to be kind of weighing heavily on Conor Murray that it's it's affecting his game too. I, I, I think if it's one thing we could do differently at all, I would just abandon that for a couple of weeks. I think we probably just need to change our exit strategy slightly yeah. in yeah. terms of, of what we do. Not, not get rid of it completely. But teams last week and this week, they're shepherding very well. They're yeah. making it easy for the guys in, in, in the backfield to catch but the we'll ball. <laughs> We've no contest. So I think we need to now try and try and bring in a couple of run kick options. Um, you know, yeah. mo- mo- try and try and move try and move the backfield so that their structure in the backfield is changed. So so change their backfield structure, get them moving, and then bring in your line. And then and probably it might be we might be able to go back then every fourth or fifth time to a box kick because yeah. the backfield is not set so rigidly. I think you hit the nail on the head, Johnny. Like variation is the key there. In terms of you know, maybe I'm, I'm being overreactive, you don't have to get rid of it completely, but certainly a reduction. Like we've got a, we've got a left foot, uh, left footer in Kearney as a fullback. Mm. We can go 9-10, uh, you know, a nice miss pass to Kearney. It brings up their centres. Their winger can't stay deep if it looks like we're running it. And your left footer pings it 40 metres behind him. Like there's, 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 a, there's great simplicity to that. There's no real risk to it, and it would it would change how we get out of our own territory. Similarly, kicking it, dropping it back to our ten, who kicks long. Um, there's there's two variations immediately off top of mind, and and I you know for for a guy of Joe's acumen and a guy with such huge knowledge of the game, it just I can't quite work that one out. He's obviously got a reason why he's so persistent with that same exit strategy tactic. For me, I think they need to vary it up, as you said, Johnny. I, I totally agree. All right. Good stuff, Andy. Safe home. Cheers, guys. Andy Dunn there watching Ireland's 22-13 win over Scotland at Murrayfield. Johnny, thanks a lot for joining us in the studio. Anything Cheers. else you want to... No, no. All good. All good. Home to the kids now. That's about it.